Welcome. <clears throat> this is part of the Yes California series of debates of declared candidates for the governorship of the world's fifth largest economy. Uh, today we have Mr. Fuji Shiro, Mr. Kevin Call, and Mr. Louis Marinelli. <clears throat> now we are having recall candidate debates with registered declared candidates. We have about 20 or almost half the list who've been in discussion with us or participating in the debate. Separately from that, we have started to allow individual you candidates. Have a you have the echo? Yeah, let me. So I'm just gonna mute all candidates until it's your time. That's the only way I can cut out the reverb. Please nobody be offended. I will make sure that you're allowed to speak when we call on you, it just makes cleaner audio. So. Um, we're having the recall candidate debates and they're going very well. About half the candidates have signed up or in discussions to participate in that. In order to make the debates more exciting and based upon feedback from the audience and news reporters, in addition to the candidates themselves, we began to offer something new. <clears throat> candidates, the ability to directly challenge each other in debate on one particular topic. So the recall debates are many candidates covering many questions so that the audience can get a view of what's going on. We've also allowed each candidate to say, I would like to debate a, this particular candidate on this particular issue. Knowing with that, Mr. Shiora was the first to take us up. Mr. Shiora challenged Mr. Marinelli to debate on the topic of California acting more like a nation. A few days ago, I met Mr. Cole and Call, and he agreed to also participate in this debate. Now, the interesting thing here is that each of these candidates was unprompted and said, without me pushing it, that they just felt kind of California seemed less like a state and more like a kind of a novel separate country almost, even though it was technically a state. Each candidate said that to me on their own without prompting. And that's why we decided to have this special debate originally at the request of Mr. Shior without prompting and which Mr. Call also asked to be participating in. Today's debate is gonna be amongst the three candidates only. We can have more debates on this topic or any other topic. And today's topic is <clears throat> California, acts like a nation more than a state. What does that mean? How do we think about that? Is it a silly question? Should we ignore it? Or in fact, is it the most pivotal thing we should all be thinking about at this time as a station of 40 million people in the world's fifth largest economy? We're gonna find out what the candidates think. Again, if you'd introduce yourself, I'm gonna allow one minute introductory statements to you and why you think the topic of California being in, uh, more like a nation is interesting in no particular order we're going to go with mr shiora and then we'll go to mr call and mr marinelli mr shiora in one minute why do you think california's more like a nation than a state uh, it helps if i you. yeah sorry <laughs> thank You're you on. marcus thank you can you hear me now yes sir I just want to say thank you, Marcus, for uh, hosting this to ensure a well-informed electric. I want to thank uh, Luis Marinelli. Thank you for being here. And I want to thank Kevin Kalji, Namasteji, for being here. And I believe California is more like a country economically, socially, and culturally. And our differences is what make us so great. But at the same time, I would politely, respectfully challenge Luis Marinelli, how are we going to fund it? How, how are we going to have a currency? And that's one of my concerns. So yes, we are like a country. And there's so many people I've met that have very similar concerns with Mr. Marinelli about California being like a country in so many ways. So economically, we're a powerhouse. Technologically, Hollywood, entertainment industry, our industries are titans in the world. So that's what separates us from other states and even here other countries. Okay. Kevin Call, in a conversation uh, between the two of us, you brought up on your own that uh, as founder of the Global International Trade Education Organization that allows you to meet such high 
level federal officials as Barack Obama, John Kerry, and Secretary of State Clinton, that you'd been able to travel the world. You'd seen California in relation to the federal government, and that you felt California was more like a nation than a state. Kevin called. Why do you believe that California is more like a nation than a state, sir, in one minute? Thanks, Marcus. Thanks, Marcus. Uh, real, it's a real pleasure that uh, you have initiated this uh, topic, which is very dear to my heart. And uh, I welcome my other two uh, associates of mine, Marcus, Namaste, you know, and Mr. Martinelli. Uh, I hope you don't mind my pronouncing your names right. But uh, if I may ask, uh, Fujura, which uh, country are you from? You're from, uh, I think, Japan or? Well, my father is Japanese, and I was okay, born in San Diego, California, Republic got of it, California. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. I thought so. Anyway, I am. Uh, I was born in India in a village uh, near City of Joy, which is all Calcutta. It used to be known as Calcutta. Now it's Kolkata, and uh, I spent thirty years of my life in India, and I'm going to be completing thirty years of my life in. United States and California, most of it. And uh, California, the day I landed here in December of 1991, when I saw the demographics of this uh, Angelinos primarily, I've seen that every five miles there's a new country. So United Nations, or whatever you call it, 193 nations, or uh, approved nations of the United Nations, are right here in uh, Los Angeles in 200 square miles. And these leaders of uh, different nationalities who are immigrants of this great nation have contributed to the growth of California. And this California, which was the third largest economy in the world, has come down to the fifth largest economy in the world. As the governor, 41st one, I will make and see that it is number two in the world, ahead of China. And China is a nation that we built them 40 years ago. We started, that was the biggest mistake of the United States to have joined hands with China and made them into an empire, which we are all suffering today, whether it's the Wuhan virus or anything else. They don't listen to us. And this is exactly that I'm running for governorship. Why China and not the rest 183 nations also? Thank you, Marcus. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Marinelli, you said that California acts more like a nation than a state. Why make that statement? Have I said that? Wow. Uh, yeah, well, my name is Louis Marinelli. For the viewers out there, I am one of the founders of the California Independence Movement, modern day California Independence Movement, known around the world as CalEx, it thanks to our work in getting the message out to not only the people of California and the people of the United States, but also the people around the world. And I believe that California is more of a nation instead of a state because of its economic size and might, because of its uh, population demographics, because of the resources that we have, all of which combined make us uh, able to be an independent country. We don't need to have uh, the United States to support us. It's quite the opposite. We're supporting the United States. And so California is a distinct society like Quebec in Canada, like Scotland in the UK, like Catalonia in Spain. California is also a distinct society. And that is an important ingredient as to what allows us to have a legitimate claim to becoming an independent country through self-determination. And that is a world uh, recognized uh, ingredient for what's necessary to become an independent country, that you are a distinct society. And on top of that, if you look at California's history, how did California become a state? It became a state in a much different way than most of the other states in this union became a state. We were taken over militarily and occupied militarily, whereas most other states were settled by American uh, settlers. They formed for themselves a Republican form of government. They then applied for uh, statehood to the Congress, and then they were admitted into the union uh, through that path. California was militarily conquered. And then the conquerors created a constitution for themselves and applied for uh, statehood for themselves without input of the local population. That is grounds to the UN Charter 
for California to have the right to a referendum on independence. And that's what this campaign is about. Put a referendum on independence before the people of California. Okay. We're going to move on to some more specific questions. I'm looking for the opinion of each candidate. There's a series of questions. You have one minute to answer. So these aren't in-depth answers. It's more like, how do you view this? So for the first question, in February 2017, Reuters Ipsos and Stanford University did polling on the concept of California becoming an international state. Both of them found that one third of Californians were open to the idea of leaving America immediately. That's Reuters, Ipsos and Stanford University in 2017, two of the most reputable polling institutes in all of California. Both asked the same question and two independent polls showed 32% were for Cal exit. However, they also showed something interesting. An additional 15.7% said, don't know how they feel. We're not necessarily opposed. GQ magazine added that up and said that's about 47.5%. 47.5, 47 47.5% of Californians said they're open to discussion of leaving America and they're not necessarily opposed to the idea. Reuters, Ipsos, and Stanford University, February 2017. So to Mr. Shiora, how much support is there for CalExit in California? How much do you think Californians think about the idea that California is more like a nation than a state? In your opinion, sir. Well, I'm not going to give my opinion. I'll, I'm going to speak as an elected California official on record. And I've met many people, Republicans, Democrats, Libertarians. They have told me they would like to see California become a country. So let me just say that very clearly. There are a significant number of Californians I have met that do prefer and desire for California to become an independent nation for various reasons. And I met very astounding people, amazing people from left and right on the political spectrum. So there is a lot, and I'm very curious to understand why. Why are they so passionate about California becoming a country? And the reasons are varied and is a significant number. I'm currently in San Diego, California, and I've talked to military personnel who confided in me in private, that they would prefer California become a country. So this is, the numbers, I do not know, but in my experience as an official California candidate and elected official, there's a significant number out there that do want California to become a country. Mr. Call, same question to you, sir. In your opinion, you've been in California for decades. You've traveled, you've been at a, a, an official, you've met many people. How much support is there? How many times have you met regular Californians talking about this idea or California dreaming, as we like to say? To be honest with you, Marcus, it's zero. And I disagree with both of my uh, advisors. Uh, when we, you know, we're having a discussion. I think what has uh, transpired, 47.5% that you're mentioning about other people who are born and brought up in this country. I, as an immigrant who came to this country, I treat myself as a born American. I love the American flag when I was born. I used to read Newsweek and Time magazines while I was in India. At that time, way back in uh, 80s and 90s, early 90s, you know, or 70s, when I was growing up as a child, uh, the desire to be an American was the only uh, intention of all immigrants. So if California says that it wants to be an independent country, I think the rest of the immigrants of the state would rather go to other states and uh, be and be called an American than be called a Californian. Because California has not reached that status of being called an independent nation. It's the same thing like we experienced this in Mumbai. Mumbai controls 30 plus percent GDP of the nation of India. And there is a call like that you know, residents of Mumbai, because they contribute 30% plus GDP of India. They say, why don't we, everybody wants to come for jobs, everything to Mumbai. So it is exactly the same scenario in India, what is happening in the United States. But that's my answer. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, we have a lot of questions and I want to hear from everybody. I know the public does too. Um, uh, I will just say that 
it, it can't be zero percent because you brought well, up Marcus. The idea. Is, Marcus, uh, I mean, let's, let's, let's go to Lewis Marinelli. I mean, let's, if you're going to join the same question, you yeah. how much support is there for Cal Lexus? Well, I mean, like, like I think you were about to say, I was going to be proud to be the first person that Mr. Kyle has ever met that supports California independence in California. So now we're at one instead of zero. You're on the debate stage with at least one candidate who supports that idea. Another candidate who has recognized that there's a lot of people across the state. So I don't know uh, what part of the state you're living in. Maybe you're out there in the boondock somewhere. But there are a lot of people in California who support California independence. I'm one of them. Marcus is another one. And like those polls that he's referred to, there's at least a third of Californians who are openly supportive of the idea. Uh, I'd also like to point out the fact that you said as an immigrant, you know, so many immigrants are happy to come to America and they they love the American flag. And when they come here, they're so proud of it. And, and I would argue that the reason that they're proud to be Americans is, is because of California culture is a part of America. That's what makes America, I think, uh, attractive to foreigners because California is much more like the rest of the world than the United States, the other 49 other states are. And so you, uh, I believe you said you're from India, uh, you know, other immigrants come to America and because of California's size, populations, 40 million people, its impact of our culture on the rest of society, I think that the image that America projects around the world is to a large extent, uh, you know, California image. And that's a reason why we want to secede from the unit for two reasons. Because we are a distinct society, as I was talking about earlier, but also why should we Californians, 40 million people, have such an impact on the rest of the country? Let's let the United States be their country and govern themselves as they see fit and have their image around the world represent who they are. And then we as Californians who have a different set of values, who the Americans don't like, by the way, we can have our image around the world that represents what California represents. And we can govern ourselves according to the ways that we want to govern ourselves. And that's what this campaign is about. It's about self-determination. It's about self-governance. It's about Californians getting out of the hair of the Americans and the Americans getting out of the hair of Californians. Nobody wants in California to listen to what the 49 other states want, want us to do. And likewise, the other states hate when California is telling them what they need to do. And so let's just end the problem have a national divorce and everyone can govern themselves as they see fit. Okay, uh, we're going to move on to thank you all, all candidates. Thank you. That's excellent. Everybody giving their opinion. You don't have to agree. And in fact, the public likes to see people having different opinions because they view it as a real debate. So I'd like to go to this question. In February 2017, Polls showed around 65% of Californians were for ignoring federal law on climate change and immigration. Quotes from Politico magazine in February 2017, 65% of California adults say the state and local governments should pursue their own policies to protect the rights of undocumented immigrants, while 63% of adults support state action to address global warming, according to the poll. That was February 2017. April 2020. California Governor Newsom told the federal government that California would ignore their guidance on coronavirus and follow our own protocols for reopening the economy. May 2021, that's this month, Joe Matthews, a well-respected policy reporter, said that the Supreme Court is very conservative and appears to be biased against California. He said, quote, as for the current justices, here's a warning. If you persist in open bias against our state, don't be surprised if citizens defy your rulings. And finally, in May 2021, when the CDC and Joe Biden issued guidance that uh, people with vaccines need not wear a mask, California said, we'll look into it, decide if we agree, issue our own guidance, and do it on our own schedule. That is a period of five years where even without CalExit, you have the California people and the California government saying, we don't care what the federal government says. We'll do our own thing. That's not with the CalExit. That's the people and the Californians. So even without a CalExit, do you support a continuation of the existing behavior of California people and its government, ignoring federal law and directions? Let's go to Kevin Call first. Kevin Call. 
I agree with uh, what you're saying, Marcus, but the point is we have to treat California as a state, not as a country. And decisions have to trickle down from the federal government to the state. That is the right way to go about it because everybody who has succeeded in California, whether it's Amazon or Facebook or Google, all these companies have gone global. That's why California is the fifth largest economy in the world because of the global nature of these companies. So the global globalization of the companies of California have been given preferences, maybe because of the venture capitalists who are supporting these ventures. But what it is that CDC guidelines have been, you know, not up to the mark. This pandemic has not been up to the mark. The worst thing that has happened is when the NIH gave $3.7 million to the Wuhan lab, they needed to be prosecuted first for the truth to come out. And last one and a half years, America is looking like, you know, like we are beggars to the Chinese CCP asking for information on a daily basis. And we don't get those informations. So we really don't know the origin of the Wuhan virus, but the NIH, which is funded, $3.7 million should be held accountable. From there, all the disclosures will come in right. and the CDC guidelines should be followed. If, if I may, if I may, if we could get a, a straight answer. Californians have said that they wanted to pursue their own policies on immigration, climate change, coronavirus protocols, mass protocols, reopening the economy, a variety of issues. They've done this over five years. Are they wrong to do that, sir? Or do you support this continued behavior by California? Kevin Call. They are wrong to do that because immigration is a federal issue and okay. CDC guidelines is a federal issue. Okay. Kevin Call. Thank you, sir. We're going to go to uh, Fujishira. Fujishira, mm -hmm. is it okay that Californians behave this way and their elected officials, or is it not okay and they should stop that behavior? As an elected official, for the state of California, I will do what's best for the residents, the voters of the state of California. That includes people that were born here, people that are undocumented. We are Californians, first and foremost. And I'm thankful for the sanctuary city status that kept, kept families united, that kept helped keep families here and all the children from DACA. So yes, I would do what is in the best interest for the residents, of California, documented or undocumented. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Marinelli, same question to you, sir. Uh, do you support California acting like this, or we should stop that right away? Well, of course, I support the fact that California is going to ignore federal laws. I mean, and the best justification for that is the fact that the federal government ignores federal laws. So if they're to set the example, in California, it can, can take uh, you know the same path forward and ignore those federal laws to pursue the kind of public policies that the people of California need and deserve. When it comes to immigration, for example, we should be setting our own immigration. There's no reason that senators and, and representatives from North Dakota or Maine should be setting immigration policies that affect California. I mean, it's a completely different world. And so why should the politicians who are from Maine, North Dakota, Montana, Vermont, which is like 90% white or more maybe, be setting immigration policies that affect the people of California. It just makes no sense. That's why we need to have California setting its own immigration policies and we need to have California setting its own trade policies because the needs of this country between state to state, especially when you're talking about two different sides of the continent, are so diverse from one another that it makes no sense for even California to set the policies that the people of Maine should live under. And likewise, the people of Maine shouldn't be telling the people of California what policies they live with. That's why we need to have a national divorce because we can't as a country function. It's too large. It's the same problem that empires have had over, over centuries and millennia is that empires grow larger and larger until they collapse. We are reaching that point with the United States of America the average length of an empire that lasts is about 250 years. I think the United States is about 245 years old now. 
So we're approaching that average length of time that an empire lasts before it starts to collapse. And I think that this campaign for governor here in California through my candidacy as the Cali's governor is represent is re represents that idea. Because we have a candidate for the first time in history that's running on the platform of seceding from the union. Why? Not because we're just doing it for fun, but because there are arguments to be made that would justify that move. Now, some people may disagree with that, and that's why we're here to discuss those topics. But the fact is that it is a candidate that represents that. And I'm not the only person that represents it. There are other people out there that support this campaign as well. There are other candidates who support California independence. And so I think that those points all together are representative of the fact that we are approaching an end of the American and California needs to start to plan its future. Plan its future. We need to have a plan B. What happens if the United States collapses, like the Soviet Union collapsed? I mean, what happens if, you know, this is like 2021 and it's like 1987 in the Soviet Union and the collapse is coming in four years? Nobody knew about that. We need to have a plan in California. That's why we put things forward like the devolution panel. So at least get the state studying the issue. So that if push comes to shove, and the United States does collapse, we have a plan in California what we're going to do with our future and our people. Thank you. Here's the next question. In April 2020, the federal government appeared to provide no guidance on how to deal with a deadly emergency that was killing people in mass. Californians were terrified for their lives, hearing figures of hundreds of thousands, possibly millions dead. The California government felt that they were not getting the amount of uh, guidance that they needed and demanded from the federal government. In this vacuum, California Governor Gavin Newsom stepped in. In fact, he even called California a nation state many times on TV while saying that he would direct California to have its own coronavirus protocol and it would ignore whatever regulations the federal government set on that. He was widely supported amongst California voters for doing so and cheered amongst Californians in general. Given that during a crisis, when there was a complete gap and uh, inability to have uh, leadership from the federal government and Californians were scared and they demanded a higher level of leadership. And then their governor said, we're gonna do it on our own and ignore the federal government. And he was loved for doing that. It begins to appear this is what Californians want. The question for you is when another crisis comes and the federal government is not able to provide guidance to the level we Californians demand. Do you support California acting on its own again or not? The first question goes to Mr. Call. Marcus, the reason I'm running for the 41st governor position of California is in spite of all of these uh, Democrat leadership in the United States, have known me personally, I've known them personally for the last 20, 25 years, and I'm running as an independent for a sole reason. Gavin Newsom is not competent to be the governor and he should resign immediately, not because he's part of the dynasty rule that we experienced for the last 80 years. And I've sent you the details today about the dynasty rule of 80 years done by these four families. It's the sole reason as an immigrant I come to this country and last year I was walking in my beach in Belmont Shores and I see on Independence Day, the whole state has been locked down and shut down. When a week ago, before that, you see the protesters march, this march, and I don't want to specify all those things, the whole state was open. Out of 193 nations, tell me one head of state, we talk about California being an independent country and all that, when we have a governor who is so incompetent and disloyal to us Americans, that is the sole reason I'm running for office, because I don't want to see a disloyal American to be in office, and he should resign now. Okay. Uh, Mr. Shiora, same question. When another crisis happens and the federal government's not able to provide leadership to the degree that Californians demand... Is it okay to take matters into our own hands, as the governor did, to wild support, or is it not okay, Mr. Shore? Yes, first I am running for California governor, and I am thankful for the actions of Gavin Newsom in that emergency situation of 2020. 
However, yes, I would do whatever it takes to best serve the interests of our voters, residents in the state of California, because I'm obligated to, as an elected official, I would do what's best. And if it's best to ignore or not adhere to federal regulation that is either complicated, outdated, or convoluted, and we have a more clear and more uh, straightforward path to best serving Californians, absolutely, yes. Thank you. Mr. Marinelli, the same question to you. Well, quite frankly, I think it's basically the same question as the one before that. So I'm going to answer it pretty quickly and then go on to something else. I, I think that, of course, I mean, if if we have another emergency, and uh, we're not going to wait for the federal government to provide guidance. Again, they, they can't tie their own shoes in Washington. So why would we be listening to them? Uh, they they uh, violate their own laws. They violate their own constitution. And they're going to tell California what we're going to do. That's the last thing in the world that we need. And, and then the, the advice that they give us is not even reliable anyway. So California should just become its own independent country and, and decide its own future for itself. When we have problems, we can show ourselves on the world stage that we can solve our own problems. And we've done that. Because what example can anyone provide where we had an emergency, a big, great federal government came in and saved the day? I mean, the federal government doesn't save the day ever. It makes problems worse. Ask anybody in the country. You know, what's that joke that they say about, you know, I'm from the federal government and I'm here to help. That's, that's an oxymoron. So the idea that the federal government's ever going to provide guidance to California to save the day is just ridiculous. And I'd also point out this last point. You know, there, there could be talk sometimes about uh, perhaps we get some federal funding or extra federal funding in terms of uh, support from the federal government during times of emergency. Well, that's California's money to begin with. We paid that money to the federal government in the form of taxes. So that's just them giving back California its taxes to spend in California to resolve its problems. That's not some gift that they got from outer space or from another country that they then transferred into California to help us out. They're taking taxpayer money and giving it back to California to solve California problems. That's not a gift. That's our own money. And on top of that, for years and decades now, California's been a donor state which means we're losing federal taxes every year to the redistribution plan of the IRS to give the, our taxes to other states so that when there is a time of emergency, we actually get back a little bit more money, we're still in the hole. Because every year we're losing tens and hundreds of billions of dollars to this redistribution plan that gives our taxes to other states in this union. In 2019, we lost 160, $160 billion deficits in terms of taxes paid and taxes received in the form of federal funding. That happens every year. So any kind of gift that we get from the federal government in terms of support for our emergencies or any kind of guidance we get from them, I think is ridiculous and nonsense. Thank you. Okay, the next question. Uh, here we go, let me cue this up. So in August of October of 2020, October 2020, there was a poll called, this is the most hated state in America. Both residents and rivals agreed, this is the most hated state in America. That was from uh, 2020. Now that survey listed as the top most hated states, uh, New Jersey and Texas and California. But here's the thing, California was listed as the third most hated state in all of America, according to a poll that came out last year. Texas was number two only because there were more Californians than Texas. So Texas got to be the most hated because there's more people in California who hate Texas than Texan people who hate California. So really, that bumps California up to the second most hated. New Jersey was only the number one most hated place because it's hated by New Yorkers. That survey showed that California had around eight to ten states that hated, whereas any other state only had about two. So we were averaging two to five hundred times more hate distributed across multiple states in another one. Three California attorney generals have said that it is legal for California to secede through a vote in Texas versus White. The Supreme Court said in Texas versus White that if you could get consent to the states, you could legally and peacefully secede. California Attorney General Kathleen Keenally on January 2017th, Javier Becerra on July 2017th, and Vice President Kamala Harris on August 2015 
all said that Texas versus White does allow peaceful secession through consent of the states. Given that California appears to be the most hated state in America, and that it is legal for us to leave if we get the votes, is it fair that a simple majority vote of Congress could allow California to leave? And do you think there's enough Americans who would allow us to go? Mr. Call. I don't support this idea because it is the immigrant community that has built this nation also. They have a major part to play. Uh, like there was a time, you know, when the dot-com era was there, if there was not an Indo-American in the board of the company, would not get funded. So everybody's voice has to be taken. Uh, California is a separate country issue. The immigrant community would not accept that because they all came to America because of the American flag. The love for America, like I tell my kids say, you know, we are born Americans as immigrants, okay, of 193 nations of California. So to think about that these kind of associations and other things will work, I don't think that's a good idea because if there are problems, like everybody has problems, in a family there are problems, how do we make America the most powerful country in the world? We have become beggars in the global society today, to be honest with you. We got to beg where the Wuhan virus has come from. We got to beg for everything. If you look at the news these days, it's like our president is begging all over the world. You know, give us business, give us this, give us that. So how California can integrate itself with the rest of America and make them happy? Like California was an icon when I came to this country in 91. It was used to be called California Dogs. You know, I still remember I came to South Dakota. They said, you're going to California to meet all the California dolls. That was a craze because of Hollywood, because of media and entertainment in a 40 square mile is 98, 98 to 99% of the whole world's media and entertainment industry. You can't ignore the fact that media and entertainment is the one which controls how the world perceives us. So California, as a Californian, how we integrate and say we are the most loved people there are a lot of issues need to be resolved. Like immigration is one of the sole reason that we are being hated because most of the illegal immigration of the world is in California because we are, we are with most of the borders around us. If we, the only person who left America and went back to his country was Columbus. The fact is only Columbus left America. So rest of the people who are staying illegal in this country and the only president of the United States who came from California, Ronald Reagan, he fixed part of the immigration problems. To face, to clear the immigration issues, I think what is important is to have a president of the United States come out of California. That you know, is you know, Kevin, you know, Kevin, uh, you know, you pick this beautiful picture of America. It's very charming. But for some reason, every year, there's more and more Americans renouncing their citizenship. If America was such a great place, why are there more and more people renouncing their citizenship to leave that beautiful place that you described? You, the fact of the matter is that the country is to be a beautiful country, but it's not you, anymore, and that's why this campaign exists. Sir, do you really want an honest answer from me on this issue? It is to save money, to save taxes. It's the fact that it's that only the billion. It's only the billion. It's only the billion years. It's only the billionaires who made a fortune in American society being called as an American, like Halle Burton. When, when President Bush was leaving office, what did they do first? They moved their headquarters to Dubai. So same thing applies. People leaving American citizenship is for tax purposes. There are a lot of flaws in American society. I have a very large transaction which is expected to come to my company because I'm doing American cities from California. I'm doing American cities in four nations and I have a very large funds to come in for the American cities. I can't take the money because of the banking laws. These are things that need to be fixed and make America friendly again to business communities. Elon Musk left California. 32 other companies left California. The reason there are reasons because Gavin Newsom does not have time 
to sit with these companies and resolve those issues what texas is giving them so it is a very easy thing to do i, I think that mr call i think that if there's many immigrants who love america as you do and i and i agree that there are plenty of reasons why one can love america uh, i think that there are for every immigrant that loves america there's just as many foreigners who hate america because we're dropping bombs in their countries stealing their natural resources and occupying their lands with our soldiers so this idea that immigrants universally around the world and, and people around the world universally love America, I think is a false statement. There are of course some people such as yourself who've immigrated here and love this country, great. But for every one of you, there's someone around the world who hates the American flag. It represents occupation, it represents imperialism, it represents death of their families. And the California doesn't wanna be a part of that anymore and that's why this campaign exists. To get California out of the business of supporting and subsidizing the American military American imperialism and the American empire. Anwet, sir, I agree. Can I speak, Marcus? Can I? Yes. Can I uh, go ahead and respond. You know, one minute okay. response, no more, okay. please. Very clearly, you said it right. I mean, I fully agree with you. These are the flaws of the American society. I will tell you, there was a very good, the founder of Singapore once rightly said, we have to look at it on an international perspective. He said, when a Chinese goes to a country, very important, please pay attention to what he said, the founder of Singapore who built that nation. He said, when a Chinese goes to a nation, he waits, he starts a Chinese restaurant in his neighborhood, starts feeding the Chinese food, then starts talking Arabic or whatever language, African languages, wherever they are occupying all over the world. After 10 years of patience, he goes and does business. Americans, we go, WMD, Colin Powell says, WMD is there in Iraq and we bomb the country next day. That was the anger of the world, which I fully agree with you. But Americans are not occupiers. We are not occupiers. We do not occupy a nation. We liberate a nation. But there are mistakes made in the last 20 years, which needs fixing. That fixing can only come when we all come together as one nation under the American flag and say, we yeah. have made mistakes. We all have made well, mistakes. I don't want to have Judge this Bush's mistake. dominate, dominate the, the debate and, uh, and let Mr. Shua also uh, get involved here. But the last thing I would just say is that, you know, uh, it's just kind of funny you say the United States is not occupying any other countries. It seems like something George Bush would have said when he formed the coalition of the willing to go and liberate Iraq and liberate Afghanistan. And we're still there today. I mean, I'm 35 years old. I think the United States has been involved militarily in countries around the world for every year of my life. Not sure how old you are, but I'm sure it's pretty similar for you, even though you're much older than I am. Uh, the United States has been at war for most of its existence, fighting somebody somewhere. California doesn't want to do that anymore. They never wanted to do it in the first place. But we've had to because we've been stuck in this, in this marital union with Washington, with the imperialists. It's time for us to get out of it. Now, would recommend moving to another topic. Sir, to answer you correctly, most of the defense companies of the United States, where are they at? They are in California. And when in 1966, Lyndon Johnson being the president, he said, this is the worst day of my life when industrialization of the defense industry took place in the United States. So you can blame California's contribution to all these wars. And what do we export? Wars, which we agree about. Every whole world knows America has only one thing to offer to the world, weapons. So all these things, and I'm a military background myself. You know, I'm a retired lieutenant of the Indian Navy. So I know that these are issues that need to be addressed. I'm not denying that. These issues can be addressed in an appropriate manner, not letting China take over the world. China has almost taken over two thirds of the world because of the policies. There are different mm -hmm. policies that need to be changed okay. in the American society, like FCPA laws. I hope that we can the resolve the issue sometime in my lifetime so that I can live in a country that's not at war, a perpetual state of war. Sorry, I'm going to end that section of the debate. There's other questions to get to. I appreciate the uh, flexibility of the candidates. Here's the next question that we're going to go to. <coughs> Let me share a screen.
The Public Policy Institute of California is one of the most premier think tanks and survey organizations in California. It, it pretty much writes the policies uh, analyses for the California government. It, it analyzes policies, it looks at voters, it is the definitive voice of what California voters think, and their information is used as the guidebook, the guidebook for the California government. Well, the PPIC did two surveys in January and March of this year. The first one they asked, can Joe Biden unite the country or will the country be permanently divided? This was January 2021. 59% of voters, 59% of voters in California said America will not be united and will be divided. That's voters from the top policy institute in California in January. Now in March, they said, are you pessimistic that Americans can come together over their political differences? And 56% of voters said they are pessimistic that Americans can come across uh, different political spectrum. So we have January, almost 60% of voters said they don't think America can be united. And in March, almost 60% of voters said they don't think Americans of different political opinions can come together. The question for the candidates is, given that it's that polarized and that almost a two thirds majority of Californians do not think America can come together and view the future as bad, what options do we have for the future? Mr. Call. Options are very clear, sir. I've been on both sides of the aisle. Uh, I've been uh, top leadership of Democrats and top leadership of uh, Republicans. I've been on both sides. I know them personally on both sides for the last 25 years. I think the solution to unite all Americans is to come out of these small issues that they fight about. Just for an example, I was talking to somebody in Idaho the other day. Uh, that lady, a good friend of mine, doing business with me, she says, you know what? I don't want the Idaho to be a blue state. They'll take away my gun rights and abortion issues. Democrats have different perspectives. So what has this got to do with daily living today? Daily living of individuals is about global peace through global trade. So that is my whole perspective. That's why I'm running as an independent candidate because I need global trade to come to California. That's my only one set. There's only one success story as an American is global trade. Okay. That's it, sir. Uh, Mr. Shore. Uh, yes, I think once again, I want to do and I will do as a elected official today, tomorrow, next week, next month, and as the next governor of California, I will do what's best. And what's best is to really reinvest with California. And unfortunately, right now, because America is divided, I've met Democrats and Republicans alike, and they do blame each other. It is a very divided situation, almost, I would say, dangerous, unfortunately. I do believe in peace. I want peaceful relations. But at the same token, what is the best thing for the cities, for the townships, for the counties of California? And that is to think inward at the moment. Once again, we have one company in the state of California that has more money than some countries, Apple. Um, we're 40 million people. Um, we have an election code in the state of California that specifically says that we could allow international observers during our election. I don't know any other state that allows in their state law that allows international observers in the elections because it's for the best for the people of California, which I agree with. So I'm in favor of doing what is best for California. And right now, betting on the other parts of California that is so divided would not be the wisest economical choice. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Marinelli. So you've showed up some statistics there that showed about 60% of the country was pessimistic or didn't know uh, whether or not they would be able to basically uh, make peace with the other side of the aisle. Is that right? Yeah, basically almost 60% of California voters in two different polls through January and March said that they have no faith in unity and no faith that Americans across political divides will come together. 
That's almost two thirds of the voters in the most recent polls by the most reputable polling agency in California. Response? Okay. So, so my response would be, you know, I don't think that there's necessarily a, a need for them to come together. I mean, that's what this campaign is about. It's about to separate each other from before we go out and start killing each other. We don't need a second civil war in this country because people are going to be going to the streets and fighting over things like gun rights. I mean, there are a lot of people on the right who I know personally, if you say you're going to threaten to take away their guns, that you're going to be shot at trying to do so. And there are just as many hostile and radical people on the left who are going to fight for things that they believe in. And, and that's why I think that in order to preserve peace in North America, we need to get out of each other's hair. This is the dysfunctional household, these 50 states. It's a dysfunctional household. It's a broken marriage. We need a national divorce. At least let's take California, because that's our responsibility. That's our jurisdiction. At least let's take California out of the dysfunctional household. And maybe then, when Californians aren't telling the people of Texas what they need to do, and what the, and, and the people of Texas, on the other hand, are not telling the people of California what we need to do, then maybe we can live in peace in North America. And I'm pretty confident that we can. I, mean, I have friends in Texas. We've met before with the uh, members of the Texas Independence Group. And we've come to that same conclusion that we don't want to live together in one union and, and be in each other's hair and, and, and messing up with each other's domestic policies and pre policy preferences. But as two independent countries, imagine, for example, Texas was an independent country and California is an independent country. We could live in peace in North America because we're not interfering with each other's business. And that's what the goal is, to keep the peace in North America through separation of these states and allow some of the states, if they want to, to create their own federations or unions. But the union as it is, exists today must not continue with California as a member of it. We're getting down to our closing part. We have a few minutes. Uh, well, uh, Mr. Culp, uh, if I may, um, we have enough time for closing statements. So I'm going to give each candidate one and a half minutes. You can respond to what another candidate said. You can bring up a new issue or you can make a general closing statement, whatever you would like to do, but we're gonna be strict on time. One and a half minutes, starting with Mr. Call. I just wanted to answer to Mr. Martinelli about a very important issue brought up on gun rights. Most of the people, as a military guy myself, okay, former veteran of Indian Navy, I think the biggest asset America has is an army because of the gun rights. There are 500 million plus weapons we have in the United States by its citizens. That scares countries like China that is building up its arms, larger size than any part of the world. 6,000 plus war, warships are being built by them. They are getting ready for a third world war of armed magnitude. Imagine if the Chinese people of 1.6 billion people they come to the shores of America. Every American armed is a soldier of this nation. So I want every American, that constitution that provides it, the guns, that discussion should be stopped from the Democrat side and say, this is our human assets. We have 350 million soldiers against Chinese 3 million soldiers. So these kind of preparedness has to be stopped in discussion regarding abortion. There I feel. I'm sorry, that's time. I apologize. Uh, Mr. Shura, minute and a half, closing statement, sir. Thank you. My name is Fuji. It stands for family, unity, justice, integrity. I'm running as your California governor I'm independent, I'm also pro-life. And it's very near and dear to me that I was born in the city of San Diego. And as a native born Californian, I'm here to tell you that if there is a vote for California independence, I will respect the decision of the voters. The voters have a choice to vote yes or no on that very important topic. And who am I to take away their vote? Every qualified California voter should have a qualified chance 
at voting on such an important topic. And this is a complicated topic that deserves more discussion. And I'm thankful for Kevin Kolji for being here and Marinelli being here and Marcus holding this. But what we need now is have a vigorous and civil debate on this important topic. So I will be the candidate for you. I encourage you to visit my website at www.governor.life. So here's the time to really go forward. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Marinelli, minute and a half, sir. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of just a little surprised here because uh, we were joined by an immigrant here who has something against China. And I don't know that that's a California value to really single out a whole country and think that they're the big bad bullies of the planet. And, and I also think that we're not living in the 18th century anymore where, you know, soldiers are going to get on a, a ship and cross the ocean unnoticed and then land on our shores and start taking over towns and raiding cities and burn down our, our straw houses. I mean, if the Chinese were to put a billion people on ships and send them across the ocean, I think we would notice it as soon as they left their own shores and they wouldn't get very far. This is the 21st century. We were able to notice that kind of thing. So I don't know where all this fear mongering about China is going on. But anyway, back to the point, I think that I'd like to use um, the remaining time to you know, build upon what uh, Fuji was saying, because he was saying that the people of California deserve to have a vote on independence. And that's exactly what my campaign promises. A vote for Marinelli is a vote for independence, because if I'm elected governor, I will declare California to be an independent country. I will then have my declaration of independence affirmed by the state legislature. And then the state legislature will put that to a vote before the people. That follows the Norwegian model. It happened in 1905 in Norway, where they unilaterally declared independence. It was supported and affirmed by their uh, supreme legislature, uh, upheld by a referendum. And then they gained their independence within five months from Sweden. I think that we can follow that model here in California. My campaign for governor is about putting an independence referendum before the people of California, following an affirmation of my declaration of independence by the state legislature. We can achieve California, but we first need to recall Newsom, replace him with a candidate that supports California independence. That candidate is Louis Marinelli. A vote for Marinelli is a vote for independence. Thank you all for being here. Uh, we are willing to have uh, another debate on this topic of California independence for anybody who'd like to talk or any other candidate. Additionally, all recall candidates can challenge or request to debate any recall candidate on any particular issue. We're very glad Mr. Shiora uh, started this idea. We're very glad Mr. Uh, Call agreed to be part of this. Thank you all the candidates for being here. I have to go now. We have a mainstream recall candidates debate at uh, one and another one at 3.30 in addition to debates next weekend. So if you'd like to be part of a debate, if you are a declared candidate, get a hold of us. If you'd like to debate a particular person on California independence, get a hold of us and I will love to set that up. Thank you everybody for showing up. Thank you all for being flexible. This Mark, will be the end of yes. If, if I can just point out, we're not debating here right now, but I just would like to point out that tomorrow, uh, anyway, well, close to tomorrow anyway, is June 14th, which is the California Independence Day, the day that the uh, bear flag was first uh, raised over the land of California. And so we're going to be celebrating California Independence Day as we do every year. Uh, the Americans kind of took it over by making it Flag Day. And that's, I believe, an intentional move by them to kind of uh, stifle California history and make Californians forget about their own history by replacing our Flag Day, the day that the bear flag was raised over California, with American Flag Day. But Anyway, the truth of the matter is the Bear Flag Revolution, the Bear Flag was raised the first time on June 14th, 1846. That anniversary is tomorrow. Excellent. Thank you. Good to know. Uh, uh, also, uh, before we go, because I'm a nerd, Lee Kuan Yew is the guy who created Singapore. And he said that while he came from Chinese culture, he viewed himself as a Singaporean because mm -hmm. Singapore was a diverse culture an international port trade and not like mainstream China. And he viewed himself as loyal to those people that included many diverse immigrants. Proud to stand in the shadow of Mr. Kuan Yu. And we'll leave it there. Thank you.